Recently, the internet is full of stories from people trying to find their first job as a software engineer or finding a new job after being laid off. It doesn't matter what degree you have, which skills you have, how motivated you are. Every job opening receives hundreds of applications within the first minutes and it seems like there is no hope. At least that's what it feels like on tech Twitter and in the news recently. And yet, here I am working as a software engineer who made a career change a couple of years ago without a degree or prior experience. And I noticed that the method I use is rarely talked about. Most people aren't aware of it and that's why I'm making this video. You will learn exactly how I did it, why it works and if it's something that you should consider. So let's dive right into it. I started my career when I moved to Japan seven years ago. I graduated with a degree in Japanese and business management and found my first job at a mid-sized IT company in Tokyo. My job was to expand their businesses in Southeast Asia and basically help with business development. But I always had a passion for creative work and I was really good with Photoshop. And that came in handy. So naturally, I found myself doing more and more marketing work, creating website content, and then later managing and creating websites. Initially, I used some visual website building tools, like those what you see is what you get editors, but that's how I got interested and started learning how websites work and how to build them. And as mentioned earlier, because I really like creative work, I wanted to make them look as cool as possible. So I started experimenting with HTML and CSS and was essentially teaching myself everything I needed along the way. Now I had a problem. It was so much fun that I didn't even want to do any other tasks. And that's when I realized that I probably belong into front-end development. And since it was an IT company, most of my colleagues were software engineers, so I just asked for advice. So after a lot of encouragement, I decided to give it a shot. I reached out to my boss and to the CTO and just went for it. I asked if I could switch over to the engineering team. And after demonstrating how much I had learned and how motivated I was, they let me do it. Now, I don't work there anymore, but it basically opened the door for me and I was able to get a foothold in the industry. Now, of course, this method only works if you're not 100% sure yet if you want to go that path or if you just need more time to learn the necessary skills. So it's not for everyone. But if you want to do it, there are some key points that are really important for this method to work. First off, you need a skill that is not directly related to software engineering or is only complementary, like for example, design because you still need to land your first job as a non-engineer. As for company size, you should aim for a mid to large size company, because if you choose a small one, chances are they won't have enough resources to accommodate a switch to a different department. And also make sure to find a company which is in the IT industry or which has a really big engineering team. That way you will have better chance of finding an opening and they will likely have more resources and teach you during your first one or two years. Also, I recommend making friends with other software engineer colleagues. I think software engineers are in general very helpful people, especially if they see it that you're motivated, they will be glad to help you out and give you advice. And not only that, you can also get a good insight into their work, how it is to work as a software engineer, if it's something for you. And of course, if you leave a good impression on them, then they will also be happy to recommend you when you make the decision and want to switch over. And finally, to maximize your chances for this to work, you have to show that you're motivated. And the best way to do that is to learn as much as you can on your own and if possible, build your own projects. Let me give you an example of what I did. I used HTML, CSS, Python and Django to create a website that basically scrapes some data from other websites and displays it in an organized way. I know the choices may be a little bit weird to use Python and Django, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You just have to show that you're willing and capable of learning by yourself and acquiring all these skills that are necessary. If you follow all these steps, I think chances are really high that this will work. Software engineering is one of those unique fields where you don't need a degree and you can basically learn everything that you need from YouTube or from courses. There are plenty of options to choose from. Basically, the information is all out there on the internet. You just have to put in the work and be motivated to learn everything. And speaking of courses, I'm partnering with Code Crafters. They have a lot of detailed step-by-step -step tutorials on all kinds of topics. There you can learn all kinds of programming languages and concepts by building real-world projects, such as creating your own GitHub or even your own torrent client. I tried out the latter because it was new for me and I learned a ton and it was also really fun to do. The tutorial was really easy to follow with all explanations and even verifying that my code is correct and works. I definitely recommend you check it out and if you decide to sign up, make sure to use my referral link which is down in the description. I'd really appreciate that. And now back to the video. Now lastly, I want to explain why this method works. Put yourself in the shoes of a company. Hiring the right people is a pretty tough job. You can never be sure how a person will perform how motivated they are, how much they can be trusted, and if they fit in the company culture. These are all risks for a company. But with this method, when you ask to switch departments, they already know who you are. 
so all of this minimizes the risk for the company. And not only that, it's also cheaper. In case you don't know, most companies use staffing agencies to find candidates, and when a candidate is hired, these agencies typically charge a fee that ranges between 15 to 30 percent of the candidate's first year's salary. But of course, the exact cost varies from country to country and from industry to industry, and also from position to position. But you get the idea. But if you're already in the company and you switch departments, then they can save on all of these costs. So to sum it up, this method is definitely not for everyone, but everyone is different and this might just be the right path for you like it was for me. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions or advice you want to share, leave it down in the comments. Subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.